right now. Today is the day that you choose to change the rest of your life. It is time to turn your setback into the greatest comeback story ever told. And nobody is more capable than you. This is the Ranting Weight Watcher Podcast, the future number one weight loss podcast in the world. I am your host, Donato Russo. I hope you enjoy the show today. If this is your first time here and you enjoy the show, please subscribe and spread the word of the Ranting Weight Watcher podcast wherever you are and to whomever will listen. If you'd like to connect on social media or wherever else, check out my Linktree page, Linktree forward slash the Ranting Weight Watcher. Let's connect today. Hello, everyone. Welcome to episode 137 of the Ranting Weight Watcher podcast. If this is your first time here, I hope you enjoy the show. Please consider subscribing and also whatever platform you're using, please consider rating the show. If there's a, if there's a rating system on the platform, however you're listening to me, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, uh, Spotify, Pandora, whatever it is, if there is a rating system on that application, please consider giving a four-star or a five-star rating to the show. But most of all, pay it forward. What does that mean? It means if this show has touched your life and has changed your life in any particular way, and you know other people that need this kind of help, that need the kind of message that I'm delivering week after week, share the show with them. Tell them how to find me and encourage them to listen. That's paying it forward. That's the fee to this show. If you're, that's the most lucrative way to support this show that you can do. Share it with other people. Look, I could scream until I'm blue in the face. Listen to the show. Listen to the show. It's the greatest thing ever. But I just sound like a salesman. But if it really means something to you, coming from you, how many people have you sent to the restaurant down the street? Because, oh, they make the greatest veal parmesan on the planet. And then they go. Same idea. When it comes from you, it's just different. And if you are new here, I don't know if you know this, but I have two Facebook groups. I have the Ranting Weight Watcher podcast group on Facebook, and I have the Ranting Weight Watcher Consistency Challenge group. This group is filled with a bunch of people trying to become consistent in some aspect of their journey. Everybody's doing something different. They all use that group to be accountable to each other. If you want to find that group, search RWW Consistency Challenge in the Facebook group section. If you want to become part of the other group, just search the Ranting Weight Watcher podcast in the Facebook uh, group page. Now, I got a lot to talk about today. Let's get into this! Journey updates. I am up this week. We are up 0.4, which is about a half a pound. Total lost for the month of April is 3.4 pounds. Total loss since January 2019 is 158.2 pounds. Total pounds remaining to get to milestone 175 is 16.8 pounds. Total pounds remaining to get to the 200-pound milestone is 41.8 pounds. Week 22 of the consistency challenge that I am in is over. It ended in a failure. And week 23 is on the way, and there have been no changes added for this Week 23, we are riding it out to week 24, and then things might change. So week two of my reduction of carbs is officially over. Week two ended with an average 
of 2,265 calories per day. The goal is 2,300. So um, I actually averaged under that, which is okay. It's not far off by much. And where we started was 2,652 average. So I'm doing way better calorically than my baseline week on week two. Protein for week two averaged at 238 grams per day. Our goal was 229 grams. If I'm a little bit over there, it's... Listen, if you're going to be over on anything, what I'm learning when it comes to macros, if you're going to be over on anything, you want to be over on protein. So I'm not bothered by being 238 uh, for that week, my baseline week was 188 average per day. So that was great. I feel like that's a great transition forward. It's a little up, fine. Baseline for the carbohydrates was 406 grams average per day. Week two, average, 214 grams per day. The goal for carbs is eventually to get down to 144 grams per day. We are taking it one step at a time. This process right now, I just wanted to get it to, look, if I was averaging 400, I am happy at half that, okay? So let's just, let's put that on the line there. I'm happy with that transition. Now, when it came to fat on baseline week, I averaged low. I averaged 45.8. And that's because a lot of the things they encourage you to do on Weight Watchers is to eat low-fat things. So I switched some things up to increase that. And now for week two, I averaged 63 grams per day, which is nice. It's a nice increase. But the goal eventually is to get to 90 grams per day. Overall, so far, I am happy with the way week two ended. And now I'm well, in, I'm well into week three here. And I got to say, it's getting easier so far. So I'm not, not so scared anymore, <laughs> I guess you should say. I didn't really have any notable moments that I, I had to record. I noticed that three times on week two, I wanted the cup of Cheerios. So part of my reduction to get the, the carbohydrates down was to go from a cup of Cheerios to a half a cup of Cheerios that I would put in my yogurt. There were three days last week where I really wanted the cup. And if you remember when I started this whole thing and I reported on baseline, I was really concerned about that one. That was one of the items I was concerned that I would not be able to give up the cup of Cheerios. But I was going to give it a shot anyway. Like with anything, nothing is set in stone in this world. So if this is something you're considering, implementing macros as a way to choose different food to eat while you're on whatever plan, it doesn't really matter what plan you're on, macros fits into literally everything. It's just a way to expose the value of the things you eat and it'll educate you enough as to what changes you should make. Now, could it be used as a plan? It absolutely can be used as a roadmap to become healthy. Absolutely. But if you're on Weight Watchers and you're happily part of Weight Watchers, but you're kind of stagnant and you're looking for a way to make a choice of what to change, implementing macros into your journey will definitely help you make that choice. So basically, three times last week, I had a cup of Cheerios. That was not planned. It just kind of happened in the moment. But like I said, nothing is set in stone. Everything is fluid. If I felt like I needed it, I needed it. And it worked out. No problems. I'd rather have the extra half a cup of Cheerios and feel satiated than to not feel satiated and run to the refrigerator or the cabinet or whatever the case. Right? I didn't really tell you guys this last week. I was saving it because I figured it was big enough to create a whole episode with. 
Something happened on Saturday, April 15th. This was physically the sixth day of my quest to have a lower carb lifestyle. And as you guys know, if you've been listening when this all started, after I read the book, I decided that I was going to work on Monday through Friday first, get myself consistent, and then tackle the weekends. Weekends would look a lot more like baseline, and weekdays would look like a transition to get toward my goal. And that's basically what it's been. So Saturday, April 15th, was the very first weekend. After being low carb or averaging half the carbs for five straight days, I came sat to Saturday and decided to implement baseline lifestyle, which was which really baseline lifestyle. So I can explain it to new listeners. I wasn't so concerned. You heard the numbers, right? The numbers I averaged were 406 grams per day of carbs, and I was averaging 2,600 calories taken in per day. 2,700 calories, according to a caloric calculator, was enough for me to maintain weight. So I was averaging just under that. So this cut brought me down to a number that would enable me to lose a pound a week. 2,300 calories per day was supposed to say, hey, you're going to lose a pound a week if you stay within this calorie range. 27 was to maintain right where I was. And the funny thing was, when I did my baseline test, every day I was right there. Somewhere between 2,600 and 2,900, I was right there. So I was living a lifestyle at the time which was to maintain weight. It was not to lose weight. And how did I find this out? Because I implemented macros into my life and I figured out what I was eating, when I was eating it, how I was eating it. And a lot of this is masked by programs like Healthy, like WW, because there are zero-point foods. And for a lot of people, zero-point foods work. Listen, for like 98% of the people, Zero point foods work. And this is because what you were choosing before is literally so bad for you to change to these things, you will just start dropping weight. And that's essentially what happened to me. I walked in 400 pounds. I made these changes. I relied on zero point foods and weight dropped. And then I implemented exercise and weight dropped. And then I did it all consistently refining the process little here a little there tweaking this tweaking that messing around with things all along the way and successfully made it to 150 pounds loss doing that and then everything flattened out my decline in weight started to become a straight line and this is what gave birth the investigation of that which only happened a few weeks back, showed me that for a year, I'd be basically flattened out. More like 10 months, but close enough. So anyway, let me get back on topic here. Saturday comes. I'm back to baseline. I don't really care how much my apple weighs. I don't care of the amount of the ratio, carbs, protein, fat. I'm not really caring. And something happened to me around noon. Now, I have hypoglycemia. And usually stuff like this only happens if I dare to eat something that's crazy sweet, like ice cream, like chocolate cake, like something like that where it's a dessert. If I dare to eat it, my sugar will crash. So hypoglycemia is a little bit different than diabetes where at least in my body, how it's happening is my, my sugar spikes immediately and then the body produces so much insulin, it causes it to go below normal. Not just to come back to normal, but to go below normal. 
And then crazy enough, which it doesn't, it sounds like absolutely nuts because my sugar crashes below normal. I have to then drink something sweet like juice to bring the sugar back up again. So the thing about this is, I mean, I learned this in my 20s. I found out that I had it and I went to a doctor and he told me, basically, if you manage the sugar, you never have this problem. If you avoid it altogether, you'll literally never have an issue. Okay, so obviously I don't avoid it altogether. So how do I handle it? Another a piece of advice I had received was every time you have something with sugar, you team it up with something that has protein. And it will make the sugar spike less affected on your body. And I did that too. I stayed away from things like pancakes and maple syrup. But I went for things more like more bland. I didn't eat sweet things anymore. When I went about my business to go closer to baseline, I didn't eat anything crazy sweet that day. So let me just get that out of the way. I didn't go and have a chocolate muffin. I didn't have pancakes with maple syrup or French toast or whatever. I just went back to having the size of apple, the size of an orange or whatever, all these those fruits that I love so much. I went back to having those and not being so concerned about how big they are, how much they weigh, and all this stuff. That's what I did on Saturday. Usually, when I have a crash, I'll know already that a crash is imminent based on, number one, what I had for dessert. Because that's nine times out of ten, if I know a crash is coming, is because I decided to have a dessert. Okay? That's number one. It really is easily timed. Two hours after having that dessert, it's going to happen. The crash is going to happen. The feeling that happens in the process is a, is a buildup. And I could see it coming from a mile away. And I could take the steps necessary to stop the crash and even out the number. But on Saturday the 15th, I sat there alone in my home. I was folding laundry and it hit me like a truck out of nowhere. I was shaking like crazy, sweating profusely. I couldn't, I could barely manage to get myself off the couch to walk to the cabinet where we had juice so I could make it happen. It never hit me so fast and so hard. So I said, what the hell? Why on God's green earth could this happen? And this is at noon. So at this point, all I've eaten was breakfast. That's it. I didn't have lunch yet. Anyway, I never really recovered that day. I drank two cups of juice never really recovered. I was so wiped out from the amount of stress my body went through in the ordeal. All I wanted to do for the literally the rest of the weekend was sleep. That day, my daughter had a friend's birthday party she had to go to, so I had to compose myself in a way that I can go to this birthday party. Meanwhile, I was sitting in a chair watching the kids in the pool and falling asleep in the chair. Because that's how wiped out of energy I was. And I kept asking myself all weekend long, is it possible that after only five days of a reduced carbon take, that I could eat the same foods, just more of it, so a bigger apple, a bigger banana, a bi- I mean, literally, that's all I did different. I'm not even, I'm not even, I listen, I have no reason to lie about this. 
Is it really that my body adapted so quickly and responded so positively to not give, I mean, first of all, to get me a four and a half pound loss and then to say, oh, whoa, hey, what's going on here to experience the intake of, I mean, really natural sugar. That's what fruit is, natural sugar. And I just kept obsessing over that one detail. And my obsession with that led me to the idea that I would come up with. And that was, I wanted to buy myself one of those blood sugar test kits and start testing myself and try to see what happens if I do this again on purpose. If I do exactly the same again, thing again on April 22nd, which is the Saturday after, could I recreate the same thing and catch it all on a cell phone app in the process? Because the blood sugar tester I got has a Bluetooth and it communicates with my cell phone and there's a cell phone app or whatever. So the 22nd comes, I have everything I need to make this happen. And I decide that I would test my blood at events. I would test it when I first woke up. I would test it after walking because the first thing I do every Saturday morning is go for a walk. I would test it a few minutes after breakfast and then every half hour I could possibly test just to see how it would work out. I woke up at 5 a.m. on Saturday morning, April 22nd. I took my blood before I left for my walk. It was at 100. Now, here's the problem. I'm getting some mixed messages as to what the number means. I look on Google, and Google says 100 is pre-diabetic. Um, I, then I see in blood test results that I had previously gotten done that the normal range for blood is anywhere from 70 something to 120. So how could I be pre-diabetic at 100 if the normal range is between 74 or whatever and 120? I have to learn more about this. In the process of all of this, I started to read a book also, which I'll tell you about in a few minutes. So I go for my walk right after I take that blood at 100. I return from my walk and I shower and about 8 o'clock, so it's just about 10 minutes to 8, I take my blood again. I have not eaten anything. I have not drank anything. So when I took my blood at 7.52 in the morning, it went down to 99. So then I went and I joined the Weight Watchers workshop and went about all my normal routine. I finished breakfast. That was about 11 o'clock that I finished breakfast after the workshops and everything else. And I decided 10 minutes after I finished, I was going to take my, my blood. So at that time, 10 minutes after I finished my breakfast, my blood sugar was 184. And then every half hour after that. So that was 11 o'clock, 1130. It was at 124. At 12 o'clock, it was at 75. So a huge drop in another 30 minutes. I literally watched my blood spike at 184. Now, maybe for a diabetic, this might be much higher. I have no idea. Listen, I'm. this is just me trying to solve things. I, that's what I do. That's what I do. I see a problem. I think of a way because we are surrounded in this world by tools. And maybe I don't have the best tools, but I have tools. So I, 
I took what was available to me and I'm trying to come up with an answer as to why this can happen to me. We're going to take a break. Don't go anywhere. I now present to you the Ranting Weight Watcher Accountability Creed. If you choose this day to say this creed, you are accountable to me, the author. You are also accountable to all of those before you who have taken the creed and all of those after you who will take the creed. But most of all, you are accountable to yourself. Now recite with me the accountability creed. Nothing can stand in my way because I choose to be unstoppable. My challenges crumble in my presence because I choose strength when I am weak. My insecurities have no power over my life because I choose confidence in the face of fear. I own every last one of my mistakes because I choose growth over mediocrity. The mirror and the scale are powerless because I move forward in spite of the result. Circumstances are not obstacles because I see solutions instead of problems. The demons of my past can no longer torment me because I choose to renew my mind daily. All things are possible as long as I believe because if God is for me, who can be against me? This is the creed I declare each day. It is about what I do, not what I say. I will learn the work that needs to be done. I will never stop, even when I've won. I will work consistently, no matter the cost. I refuse to believe that all hope is lost. I will work when I want to. I will work when I don't. I will work when they are cheering. I will work when they won't. I will work when it's easy. I will work when it's hard. The atonements that I've made are made with no regard. I will work when it's cold. I will work when it's hot because choices have consequences, justified or not. When I think I know it all, I will start back at one because regardless of what I think, the work is never done. And from this moment forward, when times are tough, I choose to believe that I am enough. And we are back. Thanks for sticking with me. One hour after, at one o'clock, I took it again. Again, the times are 5 a.m., 10 minutes to 8, 11 o'clock, 11.30, 12 o'clock, then 1 o'clock. I only took it at 1 o'clock because I started to feel weird. I felt the sensation that I was starting to feel like I was shaking. I did not get hit nearly as hard as I did the Saturday before, nor was it anywhere near that any other time that this has happened. But it was there. And it was enough for me to say, hey, it's present, let's take a reading and see what it is, right? So I finger pricked myself again and took the measurement. And at that time it was 74. So only one number lower than 12 o'clock at this point, the pre I went I was going based on logic of what happened the Saturday before. So on the Saturday before, on the 15th, everything was over by one o'clock. The rest of the day, I, except for the fact that I was extremely tired and just wiped out of all energy, I felt fine for the rest of the day after that. 
So I stopped testing after one because it was right around the same time the previous Saturday that I had all the trouble. In reality, I probably should have kept testing because my findings didn't really give me the idea of what I really wanted to catch here. Yes, I caught a spike and I caught a drop, but I, I wanted to see if my, my blood would ever regulate again. And I also wanted to compare it to a day like the weekday where I decided to drop carbs. What does my blood sugar do during the day, Monday through Friday, after this carb reduction that I created? Listen, the one thing I learned when the doctor diagnosed me with hypoglycemia, he told me, you have two choices. You could take care of yourself and never have the problem again. Or you can ignore this and eventually hypoglycemia becomes diabetes. The choice is really yours. So this is me in my 20s. And the amount of times I have an incident is so few and far between. It's very easily managed on those times because I could feel it coming from a mile away and I do what I need to do. And I also know based on the choice I made, I know what to do. I know what to be have close by. Listen, I had dessert tonight. This could happen. Listen, I decided to have pancakes at breakfast. This could happen. It's very easy. The way this hit me so hard on that Saturday the 15th, it got me worried that maybe I was, and it's going to sound completely nuts to say this, okay? Completely nuts considering I have been on Weight Watchers for the last four years. I don't really eat Sweets like that. And I have nothing to gain to lie from you, to lie to you guys. If anything, it just makes me sound nuts and it's a way not to stop listening to me. Okay? I could skip over this. I can gloss over the whole damn thing and say, oh, I just had a moment. I gave myself some grace. Blah, blah, blah. And move on. But that's not what it's about. It's about figuring out why. Because I didn't do anything that I would need grace for. And I'm, I'm scared that somehow, some way, maybe you get older, right? And things are different. All I could tell you is what happened to me on the 15th. So I decided I would create a day of readings, which would would represent, because I eat the same thing every day. My weekday readings, I decided I would be a little more organized with this because I couldn't just sit here willy-nilly like, I didn't get up at five in the morning to go work out. So I said, okay, I got to come up with some method of doing this that I can replicate regardless of the situation. So I got ready for work yesterday. And I said, you know what? I'm just going to do this every hour, regardless. So 6 a.m. I did the first reading. And basically, every reading was somewhere between 95 and 104 all day long, except for lunchtime. At lunchtime, it went to 166, and then an hour later, came down to 115, and then an hour later, down to 107. Other than that, I stayed between 95 and 104, 105, the whole day. It was a straight Basically a straight line. Very little variation. I'm sure that somewhere between 94, if I talk to a doctor, which I I have an appointment 
to see my doctor, but I couldn't get in until June, so June 9th. I will wait to see what he says, and I, I fully intend to collect as much data in the process as possible. But because I created this situation where I was taking readings every hour, I want to do the exact same thing on a Saturday. So I'm going to do my plan at this point because I didn't really recreate it last Saturday. My plan is to do whatever it takes to try and recreate it this Saturday and taking the readings in the same method every hour from the moment I wake up. Now, will that be a little hard because I walk for two hours in the morning? Maybe. But from 7 o'clock when I return or whatever, it should be fine. I'm not exactly eating anything while I'm taking a walk, so it shouldn't change much. Considering what happened last Saturday, I left the house 100, came back 99. So, I've been reading a new book. And it was recommended to me based on what happened to me on the 15th. And my a faithful listener, Heather, um, she recommended it to me, and that was awesome. If you're listening, thank you, Heather. I'm not far into the book. I don't know enough to explain to you, but the book is called Glucose Revolution. And I'm probably going to murder the author's name. But it's by a woman named Jessie Inchaspe. I-N-C-H-A-U-S-P-E. Inchaspe. I probably said that so wrong. But this woman is another food scientist. Just like the other book I told you about a few weeks ago. That was a food scientist talking about macros. This is a food scientist talking about sugar. And her journey in this is that she wanted to know too. So I'm doing a lot of the things right now to myself that she did to herself. She also had a hand in creating the uh, CGM, the continuous glucose monitor that you see a lot of commercials for nowadays where they just stick this thing in your arm, in the back of your arm, and it just stays there and you it your phone reads from it and you have a a real time scenario of checking your blood at any given moment now part of me would love to make a try to make a case to get this just so i could really become in depth as to what is going on in my body not because i have diabetes but because i don't want diabetes How about that? I don't want to wait until I have diabetes to ask for this. So I'm going to try and make a case for it when I see my doctor on the 9th. If there's no way to get insurance to cover it, I did look into what it would take to pay for it outright. It's not terrible. It's not ideal. But I can probably work it out but it'll just take a lot longer to get there to get it and I'll be pricking myself up a lot longer (sighs) I'm not sure how it's all going to go I have to educate myself more as to what is the actual numbers that would be considered normal Because the idea of, so far, what I've read of the book, the idea is if you never have a spike or a valley and you learn how to eat in your life and just have it be a straight line, that would be the ideal if your sugar never fluctuates and it's just a straight line across. And if you can get to that point where you can consistently live like that, That is the argument. That's what I've read so far of the book. Flattening the curve. No peaks, no valleys, just a normal life. So if I tell you that I would like to get to the point where I eat based on what my body needs, 
and this is when I was talking about macros, this is part of it. Because hypoglycemia is something I have to deal with. And you know what? We live in a country right now where there are more things on the shelves that will lead you to diabetes than there are that, will, that won't. Okay? Let's be real here. There's a lot more stuff. If it comes in a wrapper, it comes in a box, some kind of package, if it's highly processed, it's got ingredients in there that will send you straight to the doctor to find out you have diabetes. We can only deal with what we're given. And if you choose not to be educated by what's really going on, you're only handicapping yourself in the end. Maybe you guys think I'm crazy. And at the risk of being crazy, you know what? In the end, it's all about bettering my health. People's opinions on how I do things. Listen, you can't please anybody in this world anymore. Let's just re out. Let's re This is what I've gone through in the last four years. Okay? Let's, let's just be real here for a second. This is what I've gone through. I was 400 pounds again in my life. That's number one. So in 2019, made it to 400 pounds a second time in my life. And everybody's like, oh, you got to do something. Look at what you did to yourself. All this stuff. You're back here in this position again. You got to lose weight. You got to lose weight. You got to lose weight. Everybody's got an opinion. Oh, we say this because we love you. I get it. I take the steps. I start to better my life. Eventually, the words coming out of people's mouths change. And... Maybe if you lose as much weight as I did, just as you stand there, you start to make people feel uncomfortable about themselves because of how you transform your life. And then you start to hear stuff like, you shouldn't lose any more weight. You're starting to look old. Which is it? Did you want me to be healthy? Because technically, right now, at 237 pounds, I'm still obese. So which is it? Do you want me healthy? Or do you just want to be so that you feel comfortable with where I'm at? Which is it? Because that's what it's like. That's what it's like. People go from acting like they care and say, hey, listen, you really should do this. You really should get healthy. I'm saying this out of love. Blah, 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 blah. And then the very few people in this world that actually succeed at it. Because the people that start and the people that get as far as I am right now, the numbers are astronomically different. Astronomically different. A very, very, very tiny percentage gets to this point. And then you start to hear the same people that were so concerned and saying it out of love that you need to lose weight. Then they have the nerve to say, hey, listen, you really lost too much now. You really should slow down. Because you're starting to look old. You know what? Pardon me while I sit here and not give up what you feel. Because you know what? I didn't please you then at 400 and I'm not pleasing you now at 237. You just lost the ability to have an opinion on my life. And that's how it's got to be. That's how it's got to be. You have to be in this for yourself. If you're in this based on what you feel other people around you are saying, you're already going to fail. Because eventually, if you get far enough in the right direction, 
they'll try to start correcting you. There's one thing that this journey will reveal. They'll reveal anybody who really is a friend. Because the people that are there in the beginning, as you start succeeding, as long as they feel like they're better than you, they're going to clap along and cheer you on. And look, this is going to sound really bad, but you know what? I don't care because it is what it is. Those people, as long as they feel like they're better than you, are going to clap, cheer, and say, yeah, you go, boy. You got this. But then when you start to make them feel inferior, when they don't like the way they look just by standing near you, they'll never admit this. But if your success convicts them in any way, they'll attempt to correct you so they don't feel so uncomfortable. These are the people that will be gone should you continue to succeed. Make note of it because that's where it's going. This is about your health, my health. It's not about making other people happy. You know, since the inception, the goal of this podcast has been simple. The goal of this podcast has always been and always will be true balance. Mental, physical, and spiritual health true balance I truly believe with all of my heart that there is a pathway to all three regardless of who you are regardless of what you struggle with we all have different pathways and our journeys are our own So very few of us will actually get to our final goals. Some of them will get to right to the doorstep and they'll give up because it's just not worth the extra effort to go into the door. And some of us will quit the minute we have any bit of hard times. And some of us will carry baggage in our pocket that we can pull out like a get out of jail free card and say, this is the reason I'm not where I'm at. And whatever it is, it's different every week. There's some circumstance, there's some thing falling apart in their life. But the small few, the tiny little percentage of people that actually achieve everything they ever set out to do from the day that they started and they were finally serious, that, pe that group of people achieved one thing, and that is discipline. Because in order to achieve all three of these things, mental, physical, and spiritual health, the key is discipline. Discipline in all aspects. Every time we sit here and we struggle with making choices, whether it is with exercise or food or whatever the case, the reason for not choosing to do what's right is the here and now. What will feel best in the moment? We have officially taken our eyes off of 
what we set out to do in the first place. And unless we get our eyes back on that, back on what started us on this journey, we're just going to keep regressing. Discipline is the way to get anywhere. Whatever the craft, whatever the goal, financial, whatever it is, you find out what needs to be done to get to your goal. And you do it religiously. You do it like there's a gun pointed to your head. You do it like you have no choice. Because regardless of what you feel, it needs to be done. I love each and every one of you. God bless you all.